My name is Zach Arnold. I'm a Hollywood film and television editor, a documentary director, father of two, an American ninja warrior in training, and the creator of Optimize Yourself. For over 10 years now, I have obsessively searched for every possible way to optimize my own creative and athletic performance, and now I'm here to shorten your learning curve. Whether you're a creative professional who edits, writes, or directs, you're an entrepreneur, or even if you're a weekend warrior, I strongly believe that you can be successful without sacrificing your health or your sanity in the process. You ready? Let's design the optimized version of you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Optimize Yourself podcast. Whether you're brand new to the show or you're a seasoned vet, it would mean the world to me if you took just one minute to share this episode with a friend or a colleague who could benefit from what you learned today. And don't forget to also click the subscribe button in your podcast app of choice, because the more subscribers we have, the more that iTunes and the other platforms recognize this show, and thus the more people that you and I can inspire to step outside their comfort zones to reach their greatest potential. Now on to today's show. Hello, and welcome to a special episode of the Optimize Yourself podcast, where I provide my articles in audio form so you have the opportunity to walk and listen instead of sit and read if that's your preference. My hope is that you're going to use this opportunity to get up and step away from your chair for the next 15 minutes and build the habit of moving more throughout your workday. The following is a reading of my article titled, Why Writing Cold Emails is the Most Important Soft Skill That You Must Master, Especially If You're an Introvert. And this article can be found at optimizeyourself.me slash email for introverts. This article is the first of three parts in my series about writing great outreach emails. If you would like to download all three parts, as well as a bonus checklist to help you craft your next cold email, you can download my brand new Insider's Guide to Writing Great Outreach Emails for free at optimizeyourself.me slash email guide. This episode is made possible for you by, you guessed it, ErgoDriven, the creators of the Topo Mat, my number one recommended product if you are interested in moving more and not having sore feet at your height adjustable or standing workstation. Almost every new person that I meet in this industry starts our conversation with, hey, I got a Topo Mat because of you. It changed my life. Thank you. If you are not standing on one today, I cannot recommend it enough. It's super comfortable. It's an awesome conversation starter. And by the way, it's also scientifically proven to help you move more throughout your workday. To learn more and get your topo mat, visit optimizeyourself.me slash topo. That's T-O-P-O. Imagine where your career could be just one year from now if you consistently sent just one thoughtful, personal, and authentic message per week to people in your area of the industry who could provide you with priceless career advice, mentor you, introduce you to the right people, open the right doors, or even hire you for your next job. Given the tremendous upside and potential ROI from a minimal investment of your time and effort each week with zero cost, Why isn't cold outreach a habit that we all practice regularly as natural as, I don't know, brushing our teeth? Why? Because writing a cold email to strangers is terrifying, especially if these are people that you admire or look up to. When this is your one big shot, the last thing that you want to do is sell yourself too hard or ask the wrong questions or just plain sound stupid. You don't want to bother them. They're probably too busy anyways. It feels weird asking strangers for help. You definitely sound desperate and clueless. And they're probably not going to respond anyways, so why even try? There is no question that if done wrong, sending cold emails that no one responds to can be a surefire path to rejection, isolation, complete lack of confidence, and feeling like you have no way to connect to the right people that could potentially become your mentors, colleagues, or collaborators. But when done correctly, one well-written cold email can change your entire career. It is all about who you know. Too often this phrase is used as an excuse for why people aren't achieving the goals that they'd hope to in Hollywood. Nobody in this business cares about skills or qualifications or education. All that matters is who you know. And I don't know anyone. It's just not fair. If you don't know anyone yet, that is not an excuse. It simply means that it's time for you to start reaching out to people. And if you are introverted and you hate networking as much as I do, guess what? 
That's not an excuse either. Yeah, that's right. You're about to learn how to use cold outreach to build your network from a hopeless introvert who hates going to events, panels, meetups, and parties. And for the love of God, do not get me started on small talk. You too may have been born an introvert like me, but you were not born bad at networking. Saying I'm bad at networking is simply a limiting belief, a script that you continue to replay in your head over and over that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, which leads to you hiding inside your comfort zone. Jimi Hendrix wasn't born the best guitar player of all time. He became that way because he practiced fanatically. If you're bad at networking right now, it's only because you don't practice it consistently enough, which is actually good news because it means that you can get better. If you're now intrigued about the possibility of actually getting better at networking and cold outreach, but you're still not sure if it's worth your investment of time or effort, here are three reasons why it's imperative that you master the soft skill of cold outreach if you want to advance your career in Hollywood. Number one, the people you most likely want to connect with are probably introverts just like you. I chose editing as a profession for a reason. It takes a very distinct type of personality to voluntarily choose a career that includes working in the dark for weeks, months, or decades with little to no human contact, where your primary human interaction is between you and the two-dimensional characters on your screens. While the solitary nature of this industry may suit your personality as well as it does mine, there is nothing more frustrating than trying to build your network from a dark, windowless room. Well, actually, there is one more thing that's even more frustrating, trying to connect with other successful people in Hollywood who are also extreme introverts that spend all of their time in their own dark windowless rooms. If you already live in Los Angeles, you do have the option to attend industry panels, networking events, workshops, and meetups. But in all of those scenarios, you have little to no control over whom you can network with. Best case scenario, you do a little research beforehand to see who's going to be attending, but for the most part, your network expands based solely upon whomever actually shows up. And the chances are that most of those people are already doing work similar to you. So you simply end up expanding the same network you already have horizontally. But to make real progress, you need to build your network vertically. If you want complete control over who is in your network of potential mentors, colleagues, and collaborators, you have to build it yourself, put yourself out there, and connect directly with those who can help open the right doors for you. Furthermore, if you want to build that network from anywhere in the world, in your pajamas no less, rather than relying on being local to the industry, the best way to connect with the right people is cold outreach. Number two. Cold outreach affords you the ability to craft the perfect message for the right person at the right time. If you're lucky enough to meet someone at an industry event who could potentially become your ideal mentor or somebody who can help you land your dream job, what are the odds that you're prepared with the right information and you say the exact right things at the right time and without sounding desperate or feeling awkward or for the love of God, sounding like a fanboy? Yeah, it's slim to none. On the other hand, if you perfect the craft of cold outreach, you are no longer beholden to small talk with whomever happens to be around you. You control the conversation. You also have an unlimited amount of time to devote to researching the right person in advance, finding common interests, and providing value that will personally resonate with them. Once again, you can download my insider's guide to writing great outreach emails at optimizeyourself.me slash email guide. Now, if you're reconnecting with past colleagues that haven't heard from you in a long time and you're hoping to quote unquote catch up or really look for your next gig, getting good at cold outreach allows you to time your message just right. So opportunities begin to magically appear right around the time that you're looking for work, thus avoiding that reek of desperation if you're only reaching out after you become unemployed. If you're simply looking for a way to efficiently blast your resume to as many colleagues as is possible in a group chain so you can check in to see if anybody has heard about anything, then you and I are talking about very different kinds of outreach. But if you are tired of sending transactional messages and you instead want to make new connections and build valuable relationships over time, the best way to connect with the right people is cold outreach. Number three. 
Once you progress past entry level, the vast majority of job opportunities are filled via referrals, not job postings. When you're first breaking into the business, you have no choice but to submit cold applications to random postings on job sites. I actually landed my two biggest career opportunities via Craigslist and Facebook of all places. But as you continue to climb the ladder and as opportunities get bigger, the chances become slimmer that the ideal jobs that are right for you are going to be mentioned or posted anywhere publicly. When is the last time you saw a job listing that said, Marvel Studios seeking qualified candidate to edit the next Avengers film, avid experience preferred? Uh, yeah, right. Showrunners, directors, producers, and studio executives don't have the time or the interest in sifting through 500 or even 1,000 plus resumes to find a needle in a haystack. They instead reach out to their trusted network of friends and colleagues to find the best talent, which means that the opportunities that you most covet will never be posted publicly. Without having the right network of your own friends and colleagues, you'll never know that your dream opportunities exist until it's too late. Over the past 20 years, I can count the number of cold job interviews that I've had on two hands with fingers to spare. This is because I constantly stay in communication with past colleagues to see what they're up to and to gently remind them that I exist and I'm interested in working together again when the right time comes. The easiest way to avoid the endless cycle of looking for work every time a job is finished is to have a referral network that's helping you find work. It's like having all of your friends and colleagues as your agent, except you get to keep the 10%. I can trace over 50 episodes of television that I've edited over the last nine years to one single job interview. My job on Burn Notice, that came from an interview that I landed via cold Facebook outreach. My next job on Black Box came from a referral from a colleague that was on Burn Notice. My next job on Empire, that came from a relationship that I forged on Black Box. My next job on Shooter, also came from a relationship that I forged on Black Box. And my jobs on both Underground and Unsolved came from a relationship with a director that I worked with on Empire. And while the initial contact that led to my job on Glee came via my agent, I eventually landed the gig because of an existing relationship that I had built via, you got it, outreach. It wasn't until I decided to reach out to the creators of Cobra Kai nine years later that I had to start my outreach from scratch and do a cold job interview. And all it took was two outreach emails to get me that interview with the showrunners, and then I got the job in the room. Now that I've become more established in my career, people often come to me looking to hire people in my network. When someone reaches out to me asking, do you know anybody that's available? I don't have a meticulously organized spreadsheet of everyone that I've met or worked with in the last 20 years that's perfectly prioritized by their level of experience and expertise so I can identify and pass along the ideal candidates. I just recommend the person that's at the top of my mind that I've conversed with most recently whom I think could probably be the right fit. The cold, hard reality is that most jobs are not filled with the most qualified candidates. They are filled with the most familiar candidate. If you want to stay on top of people's minds and you want to be the first person they think of when opportunities arise, the most important skill that you must practice consistently is, you guessed it, cold outreach. It's time to step outside your networking comfort zone. I say the following with zero hyperbole. Your career depends on your ability to write compelling and engaging cold emails. Now, I get that as an introvert, putting yourself out there to people you admire and want to work with, it's terrifying. But if you're tired of showing up to networking events and walking away empty-handed because you didn't meet anyone new or the people that you did meet frankly can't help you, then cold outreach is the most important soft skill you must master if you are seeking advice about the next steps in your career, you're looking for mentorship, or you've identified a potential dream project that you would love to be a part of. And the best part, you can do all of it from home in your pajamas. I hope you enjoyed the reading of my article, Why Writing Cold Emails is the Most Important Soft Skill That You Must Master, Especially If You're an Introvert, which can be found at optimizeyourself.me slash email for introverts. 
This article is the first of three parts in my series about writing great outreach emails. If you would like to download all three parts, as well as a bonus checklist to help you craft your next cold email, you can download my brand new Insider's Guide to Writing Great Outreach Emails for free at optimizeyourself.me slash email guide. Thank you for listening. Be well. This episode was made possible for you by, you guessed it, Ergo Driven, the creators of the Topo Mat, my number one recommended product if you are interested in moving more and not having sore feet at your height adjustable or standing workstation. Almost every new person that I meet in this industry starts our conversation with, hey, I got a Topo Mat because of you. It's changed my life. Thank you. Listen, standing desks are only great if you're actually standing well, otherwise you are just fighting fatigue and chronic pain. Not like any other anti-fatigue mat, the Topo is scientifically proven to help you move more throughout your day, which helps reduce discomfort and also increases your focus and your productivity. I'm literally standing on one as I read this, and I don't go to a single job without it. And if you're smaller and concerned the topo mat might be too big, or you simply don't have the floor space, well, there's a topo mini for that. To learn more, visit optimizeyourself.me topo. That's T-O-P-O.